Dorset Museum and Art Gallery are absolutely thrilled to be hosting um, Elizabeth Frink, A View From Within. So it's a significant Elizabeth Frink exhibition. And this was a perfect opportunity to get the community involved in um, a project that would enable artists to respond to Elizabeth Frink's work. We've been working with the DDAG group, the uh, Dorset Deaf Activities Group. So they're a group that have been meeting for about two years and working together and doing sort of quite creative projects. So we thought we would do this project in connection with that and then the group could be exhibiting their artwork that they've created uh, within the community space but also within the uh, permanent exhibition space. My name's Karen Mitchell, I'm a Rehabilitation Officer for Millbrook Healthcare Sight and Hearing Team slash interpreter for the deaf as a freelancer. All I wanted to do really was, was give, is, is to give deaf people a much more level platform to work off of because everything they do, as you, as you can imagine, faces a barrier. So they need support, communication support, to kind of overcome these, many of these barriers and just wanted to give them something that was theirs and they didn't actually, you level the playing field. Well, you can just do what everyone else does now and that's what we wanted. The DDAG was born basically, I think, because this was our second project that we'd been asked to get involved with. So we decided we'd better put a name on the group and the group keeps growing and growing and growing, which is amazing. It's been really exciting because many of the group members don't don't didn't know very much about Elizabeth Frank so you know we were sort of starting from initial kind of drawing in the gallery space here um, and then just kind of inviting the group to sort of uh, develop their own work around what they were interested in and then the project just developed um, and emerged and it was really quite incredible what what they came up with at the end actually. I'd never heard of her but obviously while I'm here I've learned an awful lot about her. I was looking around at Elizabeth Frank and I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking she's absolutely amazing, absolutely fantastic. And then when we started training and making these sorts of things, I was thinking, it's actually quite emotional. You know, we were, we've been so happy here doing this. I, when I look at Elizabeth Rink, I can see that emotion, I can see emotion, I can see it's almost like it's telling me things. I'm absorbing it. I can see the emotion, pick up the emotion. She did, she achieved. The, we learnt, you know, she, what she did in, inspired us. So the first thing we did was made a sketchbook, a book. I thought that was going to be really simple, but it's very in intricate. You have to perfect hole for the threading, and but wow, it looked good at the end. And then we started some sketches, drawing, and then looking at shapes and um, making it before using plaster. And now we're doing some, some drawing and some painting. But on about the third or so week, they were given this massive, massive piece of drawing paper, if you like, in a big scroll, and it's about 12 foot long. They all had a section of this, and they had to choose a piece of Frink's work to then reproduce on this massive, uh, or a section of this massive paper, which they all did. The group were um, taught uh, different techniques, looking at some of Frink's techniques, so they made these fantastic sculptures So you start with the metal and you build the body up. And then the second part is that once you put the plaster on and then you build it and build it and then create it and create it, you get the shape in, the muscles in, the definition in, and that, that becomes really deep and, and yeah, become beautiful. I feel like I'm, I'm joined with something, I'm part of something, I've got a community and we all sign here, it's absolutely wonderful. And we need that, we really need that.
I learn how to say horse in British Sign Language. The sculpture shows a horse rolling. I mouth, point. What is the sign for horse, for rolling? Patient, she demonstrates. I sign, horse, horse rolling. I want the sign to make a poem, but my hands lack nuance. I don't know how to channel language with my whole self. She smiles, signs to our facilitator, who translates. She says, in BSL, you must become the horse. I watch as she becomes the horse, becomes the power, becomes the joyfulness of horse, the beauty of a horse rolling, becomes the poem. Absolutely amazed by what I've seen and taken it all in and what I've found inside myself and what I can create because of it. Every time I'm with a group of profoundly deaf people who are getting something out of something, that gives me so much joy. I'm just incredibly proud of all these people. I want to express to people about my mental health. It opens minds, their minds as well, and, and deaf people's minds too. The secret is that I come to art to meet people as well as art. I come for the art, but really I come to meet the people. So, so it's great to have both, and I look forward to it. Some of the, our clients have come from very little, you know, some won't even go, didn't want to go out the front door on their own. And they're all coming to a group and they travel independently and they're enjoying their lives. They take more control of their lives. I'm getting happier and happier as the weeks go on. What I learned um, was how um, isolated and marginalised some groups are in, in our local community. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot more confidence. I've, I'm a lot more forward. Linked with art, art-wise, and, and, you know, other people in the group. We're like a family here, you know, really like a family. A good for mental health, look outside yourself, both a different environment, different perspective, different way of thinking, different way of looking at the world. With the rehab hat on, I have a lot less issues <laughs> and a lot less texts and FaceTime calls with issues if the courses are running. It's just been a real privilege work, being able to work on the project um, because it, it just seeing you know what the group came up with at the end, their individual sculptures, the large group, but also how they all sort of started working together and how they interacted together. What the deaf people are leaving with is an awful lot of a lot more skills and a lot more confidence. I think what the museum are left with is a bit of a legacy really that this is what they did and this is part of the museum. I want this course to carry on. I want to just keep going and going and going and going. Without this, we're full of it lost. <laughs>